Today, we are going to try something uh, interesting. Maybe it's interesting, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> something new. I like to try new things in these live streams because, why? Because, I don't know, because it's interesting for me. So we're going to try a movie night. And you may be wondering a couple things. Who, who, who is this person? My name is Luke. I'm an English teacher. So this is really a a lesson for and an experience for those of you working on your English. We're going to be watching a whole movie together. And I'm going to be stopping the, the movie occasionally and making comments and sharing insights or maybe phrases. And I'll be answering questions. If you in the comments have questions, what does that mean? I don't understand that. I will do my best to answer those uh, those questions. Now, the other question you might have is, why are we watching an old movie? Well, this is kind of how it goes with, uh, uh, with streaming things. It has to be something that uh, is in the public. It's called the public domain. The public domain means, means that it's not copyrighted. I think. I did quite a bit of research, and I found a list of movies that are all old movies that I think we should be okay to watch without having to worry about um, the video being taken down or, or whatever. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, you don't know until you try. So we're going to try it. Uh, guys, if you haven't already or you're watching this later, before we get started with the movie, I would appreciate if you could hit the like button, uh, especially because, uh, well, I would appreciate it because it's a new thing and uh, that would encourage me to do more of these in the future. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so that you can see either future live streams, videos, or uh, things like this. And also, make sure to check out my full courses in the links in the description. There's a big sale going on right now. If you click on the link in the description, you can get access to that, that discount. It is a huge discount on all of my courses that expires today. That means today is the last day to get it. It ends today. So if you uh, if you haven't already checked that out, you can get all of my all of my courses at I believe it's. Let me check what the percentage is. Hold on, I think it's seventy percent off. Um, yes, 70% off. Quite a few of you guys have already signed up. I think we've had uh, a fairly large number of people signing up already. But uh, now's the chance to get it. Today's the last day. It won't be offered at this price probably ever again because it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a crazy good, crazy good deal. It's a crazy good deal. All right, let me just quickly update the cover for this. Hey, Lolly Lolly's here. Hello, Nye. Hello, LX. Guys, we're going to be watching a movie together. We're going to attempt to watch a movie together. And who knows? Who knows? Who knows if it's going to be a success or a horrible failure? But I like to figure that sort of thing out. Um, one second, guys. I'm just going to... Do something quickly here. Then we're going to get started. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hope you guys are excited. I don't know if you know Sherlock Holmes. So you probably do. There are a lot of different versions of Sherlock Holmes. The original Sherlock Holmes stories were written in the 19th century by an author named Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. He was a very important figure in actually creating the genre of, of mystery and crime thrillers. He really was an important, an important figure in that. And there have been so many movies and TV shows based on the character Sherlock Holmes and his sidekick Watson. 
This is a 1939 black and white version. You may have seen the movies. You may have seen the British TV show on the BBC. Also very good. Um, we're going to be watching the 1939 version, which is about an hour and 15 minutes long. So we're going to watch the whole thing. And um, what I would encourage you to do is pop in your questions. If you hear something you don't understand, I'll be stopping it occasionally as well to explain some things. But really, we're just watching it, kind of watching it together. Um, and so let's get started. Again, guys, before we do, if you haven't already, make sure you uh, hit the like button. Much appreciated. Also, subscribe, of course, and check out that sale in the link in the description. Here we go. You ready? See that? Adapted from. That's what you'll see when you see the original source. It'll always say, based on or adapted from The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Hey, Karina. I, I'm not going to stop it too often, guys. Just at the start, I want to just make make something clear. I've never seen this movie before. I've never watched it. Okay. Uh, I checked it quickly, and I've heard good things about it, but it could be a terrible movie. I don't know. We'll see. So far, so good. I mean, it's just the beginning. the moor to fetch the doctor, Dr. Mortimer. He was at dinner with Miss Stapleton and her brother. Very well, Barrowman. That's all. Yes, sir. Dr. Mortimer, to what do you attribute the death of Sir Charles? Heart failure, sir. I might add that for some time Sir Charles was in a highly nervous state, worried. Something was preying on his mind. And did he confide to you what was preying on his mind? Well... No. Well, then what about those footprints, Mortimer? As though Sir Charles had been tiptoeing back towards the house. I examined them myself, and as a man of science, so I... So did I, Mr. Stapleton. More likely Sir Charles was running. Running? Yeah, running from what? If you please, gentlemen, one at a time. Why don't you tell the truth, all of you? If you please, gentlemen is something that you see in really formal situations when people are arguing. If you please, sir, and then you say something you need to say. Now, that is super formal. I, I never say that. I would say something like, if I may, if I may, or if you, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, could we maybe talk about this another time or please talk one at a time? If you guys don't mind, please talk one at a time. 
If you please, gentlemen. Very formal. Obviously, they have British accents. Tell all you know. Silence, Mr. Franklin. You've already testified you were not there, know nothing whatever of this matter. Nevertheless, I insist he was murdered. Murdered, I tell you. That will do, sir. That will do. Murdered. There were no marks on the body of any kind, Dr. Mortimer? No. Then as his physician, what would you say was the cause of Sir Charles's death? Most emphatically a heart failure, sir. Most emphatically. Most emphatically means a, my strong opinion. To be emphatic about something is to have a very strong opinion about it. My emphatic opinion. Uh, you men They mentioned he died. You see him die there at the start, and then they're talking about how, how did he die. Someone thinks it's murder. Someone thinks it's heart failure. Most emphatically. Um, he died in the moors. This is the location of where he died. This is just a kind of, uh, kind of landscape in, I believe it's in, in England. Yeah, I think it's in Chesh Cheshire, England, I believe. I could be wrong. That's then, gentlemen, is the verdict of this coroner's court. Call it what you like. Sir Charles was murdered. There's more than one person in this room knows I speak the truth. Sir Henry Baskerville, arriving from Canada. I'm blessed if I know why on earth you want all these clippings about this Baskerville fellow. I have an idea, Watson, that young Sir Henry isn't destined for a very long existence in this world. What? My conjecture is that he'll... That is Sherlock Holmes. The other guy is his sidekick, Dr. Watson. This is Holmes, here. Be murdered. Murdered? It will be very interesting to see if my deductions are accurate. Oh, Mr. Holmes, while you were out, a gentleman called to see you and left this. He asked you to give it to me? Oh, no, sir. He just left it by mistake, I imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Mortimer? He didn't leave his name, sir. No, it's here on the stick, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, is it? I didn't notice. Do you know any Dr. Mortimer, Watson? No. Uh, what did he want? He didn't say, sir. What do you make of it, Watson? Why should I make anything of it? The fellow came to see you. Ah, but what kind of a fellow? Let me hear you reconstruct him from his walking stick by our usual method of elementary observation. Well, I should say that Dr. Mortimer is a successful man, well esteemed. Good, excellent. I should say that he does a great deal of his visiting on foot because the iron ferrule is, is worn down. Perfectly sound. Uh, let's have a look at this inscription. Uh, it's a big British accent. CCH. Old British accent, CCH. not modern. I should say that's the something or other hunt. Really, Watson, you've excelled yourself. Oh, has anything escaped me? Almost everything, my dear fellow. Huh? <laughs> a present to a doctor, I... You've excelled yourself means that you've done, you've done better than you have done in the past. And then Watson says, has anything escaped me? That means, did I miss any details? They're examining this walking stick to see if they can deduce from observation what what is the where is the stick from can we can we guess anything about it and then Holmes says almost everything that means you you missed all of the important details that's kind of a famous joke between Watson and Holmes Watson is not very good at observation and he just writes down what Sherlock Holmes does there is more likely to come from a hospital than a hunt and when the letters CC are placed before the hospital, the name Charing Cross Hospital rather obviously presents itself. Oh, well, you, you may be right. Furthermore, I'd say the Dr. Mortimer had a small practice in the country and was the owner of a dog. How can you tell that? Quite simple. From the teeth marks. Look, you can see for yourself. A rather large dog, I'd say. And unless I'm mistaken, Dr. Mortimer will call on us again in a few moments. Rubbish, Holmes. Rubbish. How the devil can you deduce that? Well, as he left his stick, isn't it reasonable to presume that he'll come back and get it? Dr. Mortimer, sir. Mr. Holmes? Uh, yes, come in, Dr. Mortimer. I took the liberty of calling upon and you. And left your stick. Oh, so I did. <laughs> Thank you so much. A presentation, I see. Yes, sir, from Charing Cross Hospital. Uh, this is my friend, Dr. Watson. 
Of course. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Mr. Holmes. How do you do? You're Very the formal. one man in all England who can help me. Don't say how do you do. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. A friend of mine is in grave danger. May I inquire his name? Sir Henry Baskerville, heir to the estate of Baskerville Hall. I'm in mortal hey, fear Sir Henry's life will be snuffed out. Why, what S makes you think that? Means I have information which leads me to believe that for centuries past, every Baskerville who's inherited the estates has met with a violent and sudden death. But as I recall it, Sir Charles died from natural causes, heart failure. Apparently, that was the verdict of the coroner in which I, as a child's physician, concurred. But there was one point which I kept back from the police, from everybody. Yes? About 50 yards from where Sir Charles fell dead were footprints. A man's or a woman's? Mr. Holmes, they were the footprints of a gigantic hound. A hound? Well, why didn't you report it? A hound is a, is a very large dog. Footprints of a gigantic hound. So, yeah, it's a Brit. They're talking in sort of an old style British accent, right? Even people from, except for the Queen of England, people from the UK don't talk like this anymore. And maybe they never did. <laughs> uh, um, it's sort of, a, I think it's called posh, sort of a posh accent, which means that uh, only people who are very well educated would speak like that. And some people might still sometimes sort of feels like a royal family kind of uh, dialect, but it's interesting. A couple things. You hear the phrase, unless I'm mistaken. That means I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Unless I'm mistaken, uh, Dr. Mortimer will, uh, will be visiting us again. I can't remember exactly what he said. So it's a way to sort of say that we're pretty sure about something, but actually... We're very confident. Unless I'm mistaken, this will happen. And then, of course, it does happen, right? He also says, I took the liberty of calling on you. Do we still say calling on you to mean visit, right? I called on my friend. Yeah, sometimes people say I, I called on someone to mean I went to visit someone or I went to see someone. It's not as common as just going to see someone, dropping by or, or, or visiting. Uh, took the liberty just means it's a sort of formal way to say I I." I did that. I decided to do that. Uh, grave danger. Grave in front of danger means very serious danger. Is grave danger. And then snuffed out means dead. Dead. Okay. Oh, verdict. There's another word, verdict. Verdict is like um, the verdict of the coroner was that he had a heart attack. This guy thinks he was murdered. Now there are these footprints of this large dog, this hound. A verdict is a decision, usually a legal decision, it's something that you see in a court, for example. That's the verdict. All right. If you guys have questions as we go, just, just pop them in the chat. Not a soul would have believed it. During the night it rained, and in the morning the marks were completely obliterated, but I saw them as clearly as I see you. And then, a few days ago, as one of the executors of the estate, I found this, this old document. Legend of the Hound of the Baskervilles. Uh, let me read it to you, Mr. Holmes. Wish it's I quite short. I won't bore you, I promise. Yes, please, go on. In the time of the Great Rebellion, about uh, 1650, Baskerville Manor was held by Hugo of that name, a profane and godless man. One Michaelmas, this Hugo stole down upon a neighboring farm and carried off the daughter of the house. He locked her in an upper chamber, and while Hugo and his friends were carousing, as was their nightly custom. Hey, a flashback. Such a cuddlesome little wench never existed before, I swear. Cheeks soft as velvet, a form so wondrously rounded. Ah. Tell us more. What happened then? Where was I? Her form, you were saying. Oh, yes. No need to cry out, I told her. You go will not hurt you. <laughs> with that, I whisked her I up on my saddle, covered her with my cloak, and we were off like the wind. You brought her here? To the manor? Where is she? Go fetch her, Hugo. <laughs> He's a set and done, eh, Hugo? How can he fetch her if she isn't here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she is, eh? Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> Something is going to happen. Somebody's going to die. Good, you go. Uh, 
she's really in here? Yeah. 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 Come on. <laughs> May we come in, my sweet? These drunken sots would give Hugo the... <laughs> there is no good. <laughs> Gone! Gone! Uh, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at my hey. What ails him? Hugo! What's wrong, sir? She's gone, the wench. Well, don't stand there gaping. Go bring my mare. What's wrong? Mare is a I've horse. Never seen Female him in such horse. A Where's he gone? Let's follow him. Let's go, Roderick. Farewell. Come on, Matthew. Hold the stirrup, you blockhead. I'll give my soul to the devil for that wench. <laughs> you hear how he fetched his soul to the devil for that wench? Well, may he find her and wed her, then the devil will have his soul. <laughs> On and on they rode, until suddenly they came upon the body of the girl. Dead. Then, from just over a rise, they heard sounds so hideous that the blood froze in their veins. And looking up, they beheld... <laughs> Before we could get at him, Sir Hugo was dead. His body literally torn to shreds. Such is the history of the Hound that has cursed the Baskerville family ever since. Wait a second. That's the Hound? That's not that scary. That's a, that's not that dog was not that big. I was expecting something larger. I've read Sherlock Holmes. I've read the stories. The dog is a huge monster. And if you watch the BBC version, it's it's really scary. Um. Anyway, that that part is called a flashback. A flashback is when you revisit something in the past to contextualize or understand something that's happening in the story. So this is flashback to this this the origin story of the Hound of the Baskervilles, and uh, so there's this uh, sort of curse going on, and they think that that's why this guy was killed, didn't actually have uh, a heart attack. That's that's uh, that's what they're talking about. Um, I did want to mention one word. Estate. Estate is just the, the, the property or the land owned by someone. The Someone's estate is what they own that they pass on to others perhaps after they after they die. Right. And to manage your estate is all your wealth and all your all your property, for example. Three dots says, what is a mare? A mare is a female horse. It's a female horse. Many having been unhappy in their deaths that have been sudden, violent, and mysterious. Many people have died. Well, Mr. Holmes. Interesting. Very interesting. What do you think? I don't know. But Sir Henry's arriving from Canada tomorrow. Please understand my dilemma, my responsibility. I was a child's best friend. My duty is to protect that boy. If I should take him down there to Baskerville Hall and anything happened to him... Now what I'd suggest, Dr. Mortimer, is that when Sir Henry arrives, you bring him here. Oh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Holmes. You don't know what a load you've taken off my mind. Good night, Dr. Watson. Good night, sir. You've left your stick again. Oh, thank you. By the way, Dr. Mortimer, you have a dog. I have no dog. Then how do you account for these marks? Evidently the teeth marks of a dog. I used to have a dog, a small spaniel. But it died. Good night. Good night. Is he a suspect? Maybe. Well, Holmes, what do you make of it? Do you think there's anything in it? What do you make of it? Good heavens, you're not going to start scratching on that infernal thing, are you? Dear old one. Good heavens, it's like, oh my God. Good heavens. The 
the heir will assume the title and assets means the person arriving from Canada is the one that's going to get all of this, the stuff, the estate that uh, the dead person left behind. Well, goodbye, Secretary. If you ever go back to Canada, be sure you sail with us. Thanks. You've all been wonderful. The very best of luck, sir. And the same to you. This way, Sir Henry. Oh, here you are, Sonny. Thank you, sir. And you? Thank you, Sir Henry. And you? Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Oh, Sir Henry. Tips. Oh, it's too bad. It's all over. Just when you and Bessie Ann were really getting to know each other. Oh, but we are going to see one another in London, aren't we, Sir Henry? Oh, I should love to. But uh, I, I have to go down to the country, unfortunately. To your ancestral estate. How exciting. Perhaps, Bessie Ann, if you're very good, Sir Henry will ask us to visit him. Of course, yes. We're staying at the Savoy. Don't forget. I Goodbye. Goodbye. Sir Henry? Yes. I'm Dr. Mortimer. Your uncle was my best friend. How do you do? Thank you for coming to meet me. Not at all, my dear boy. Did you have a pleasant trip? Splendid, thank you. I've taken rooms for you at the Northumberland Hotel, where I'm stopping. Fine. I assume you'll be staying in London for a few days. Yes, I haven't seen it since I was a boy. Thank you, sir. Northumberland Hotel. Sir Charles's death was a great personal loss to me. I was more than his doctor. What's this? Doing good, Saeed. What are those words? As you value your life or your reason, keep away from the moor. Now, remember I mentioned the moor is where all of this stuff is happening. The estate is around this place called the moor. That's the, the landscape around it. Uh, it's the, the place where this backstory, this flashback happened where, where someone had died, right? There's this dark past. And um, as you value your life means if, if you value your life, if you don't want to be in great danger, stay away. Or your reason means your sanity. If you, you can lose your mind if you, if you go back here. And clearly they don't want anyone to know who it was that wrote this because they have different kinds of text here. Mm, mysterious. You mind, Sir Henry? No, not at all. What do you make of it, Mr. Holmes? Why they keep asking that. What do you make of it? Watson asked it. What do you make of it? What do you make of it? Can we still use what do you make of it? Um, yes. Yes. If you're confused, you say, what do you, what do you make of this? What is your opinion about this? What do you think is going on here? It's okay to use. I use it sometimes, not nearly as often as what do you think? So what do you think is, I, I would say, more common. But what do you make of it is still used. It's still fairly common. You think that last word is printed in ink? Oh, that's simple enough. The words have been snipped from the London Times. That's evident from the topography. But the word moor is an unusual word. Your correspondent evidently couldn't find it in the newspaper. You'll admit, Dr. Mortimer, there's nothing supernatural about this. Supernatural? Uh, tell me, Sir Henry, has anything else unusual happened to you today since your arrival in London? I can't think of anything. Unless you'd say that losing one of your boots is unusual. You lost one of your boots? Yes, and brand new ones, too. Never had them on. I put them outside the door to be cleaned, and when I went to fetch them, there was only one there. Brand new boots, and you, and you put them out to be cleaned? They were tan ones, Dr. Watson. It prevents them from scratching to have them polished first. Now, will you please tell me what this is all about? Dr. Mortimer bringing me here to see you. This letter. It's about you, Sir Henry. Your inheritance in Baskerville Hall. And Dr. Mortimer thinks that it might not be safe for you to go down there. Safe? On account of a hound. A wild, supernatural monster that has cursed you Baskervilles for the last two or three hundred years. Oh, ho, that sounds grand. A family ghost, eh? Why didn't you tell me about this before, Dr. Mortimer? Well, uh, Mr. Holmes suggested... He's going to tell you about it now, Sir Henry. Take him back to the hotel, Dr. Mortimer. Show him that old document. Tell him everything, the whole business. I'll join you a little later. Come on, we'll stroll back. You can tell me on the way. This is not something to joke about, Sir Henry. Believe me. See you presently. Good night. What's up? Shh. What's up? Come on, Watson. What's up now? <laughs> 
Guess what's up was coming we back in 1939. We've got a moment to lose. Man, I want one of those hats. I want a top hat. That's not as cool. I want to visit London in the 1930s. That's what I want to do. Or I guess this is based on the 18, uh, 1890s, I think. Um, 1930s, 1890s, both fine. It looks so cool. Foggy, mysterious, something really cool about it. Try on that handsome. This letter dates back to about 1650. Oh. Good evening, paper. Get your paper, evening paper. Evening paper, sir. Get your evening paper. Get your paper, evening paper. Evening paper, sir. Tell Joel the latest news that's going on, sir. Tell Joel about it. Thank you, sir. Evening paper. A dissident, drunk fellow. And he was a dissident. That's right, Saeed. What's up means what's happening. Whether it's 1890, 1930. Whip up, Jabby. Whip up, I say. Very good, sir. Very good, sir. Who was it? I don't know, but it's just as I expected. Hadn't we better hurry on and, and warn them? No, 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 no. They're not in any danger now. Here's the number of that hansom. Find out from Scotland Yard who the cabbie is, and if you can, fetch him along to the hotel. I'll do my best. Well, now that Dr. Mortimer has told you everything, what have you decided? To go there, of course. Good, that's what I thought you'd say. And if Dr. Mortimer will only guarantee that this uh, supernatural hound of his will really appear, I'd call the radio. Oh, don't say that, my boy. <laughs> Sounds like a bogey story. They tell kids to frighten them at night, doesn't it, Mr. Holmes? Yes, rather. It might interest you to know, however, that you were shadowed from my house. Shadowed? Yes, and probably have been ever since you arrived in London. By whom? I don't know. A man in a hansom. He must have seen me run after him and had the cabby dash off. Oh, by the by, did you ever discover your mislaid boot? No. Uh, hello. Well, the brown one's here, but one of the black ones is gone. I'll ring for the chambermaid. Perhaps she can explain. Yes, do. Now, why should anyone want to take an odd boot and then exchange a brand new one for an old one? Can you explain it, Mr. Holmes? Um, no, no, I can't. Come in. Uh, did you ring, sir? Yes, about that boot of mine. Oh, I haven't found it yet, sir. I've made inquiries all over the hotel. Well, it's back, the brown one, but now one of my black ones is gone. Oh, sir, that is odd. Who else except yourself has <laughs> access to this apartment? Only the housekeeper, sir, and she wouldn't do a thing like that. No, 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 of course not. I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'll do my best to find your boot. All right, thanks. Oh. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Dr. Watson. I've got him. Come on in, Clayton. That's something that you hear in I, I don't even know if it's it yeah I've heard real real British people use it instead of my using me I don't know exactly which part of England it's from but you sometimes instead of someone saying I'll do my best you heard her say do me best uh, that's not the the posh accent from my understanding that's a sort of local colloquial thing and I don't know how common it still is but I I have heard it occasionally. So you can listen to accent accent differences between, for example, the chambermaid who's supposed to not sound, you know, high class, and these very intellectual guys who are supposed to sound more so. Of course, they're all just actors. So, um, a couple things I wanted to quickly mention: inheritance. Just so you know, they talk about inheritance a lot. We this the the main theme is really important to understand. There's money involved, right? Someone has died, and therefore there's money. And someone's going to get the money, and this young guy is the guy who's supposed to get the money because he is his heir, H-E-I-R, heir. And then the thing that you get is your inheritance. If you get money from someone when they die, then that is your inheritance. Your inheritance is the, the, 
well, it doesn't have to be money. It could be a house or whatever, property. And then you hear them say, a handsome. And you might be thinking, I thought handsome was an adjective. What, what's up with that? A uh, handsome uh, is a, a carriage. So they're, they're referring to the carriage with the horse as a handsome. It's not called that anymore, really. Uh, I don't think. Uh, maybe rarely. But uh, that's what they're talking about. Dash off. You will hear sometimes still, though. That means to go off quickly. It's sort of like... Uh, he dashed off, he ran off quickly, he went off quickly, he, he went away quickly. And then Holmes says, by the by, this is exactly the same as by the way. Some people still say by the by, I would say it's not that common. By the way is much more common. Same meaning though, same meaning. Come this way. This is John Clayton, number 2704. How do you do? How do you do, Clayton? Won't you, won't you sit down? Won't keep you long. It's good of you to come. Thank you, sir. Now, Clayton, I wish you'd tell us who your fare was that watched a certain house on Baker Street this evening and later followed these two gentlemen. Well, I'm glad to you. You know as much as I do, sir. Well, not quite as much, I hope. The gent said as how he was a, a detective, sir. Oh, he did? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, how would you describe this, the uh, handsome driver. this gentleman, Clayton? He's the guy with the, well, with the whip. I suppose about 35 years of age, sir. Mm -hmm. Dressed like a torf. Had a small black beard, sir. And the colour of his eyes? I can't say, sir. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, when did he tell you that he was a detective? At the station, sir. When he gave me the two guineas, what he'd promised me. Mm -hmm. uh, did he tell you his name? Yes, sir. Uh, what did he say it was? Sherlock Holmes, sir. What? Well, that's the name what he gave me, sir. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> well, whoever it is at least has a sense of humor. Here, Clayton. Here's, uh, here's something for your trouble. Thank you, sir. Cool. Thank you kindly, sir. Is there anything else I can tell you, sir? Nothing at all, I think. No, sir. Good day, sir. Good day. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, sir. <laughs> well, Mr. Holmes. The person with the gun. Said his name Do you is think? Sherlock Holmes. Perhaps. Uh, tell me, Sir Henry, when were you planning to go down to Dartmoor? Immediately. Tomorrow. I'm really awfully keen to see the old place. Uh, you'll accompany us, Mr. Holmes. Uh, I'd like to very much, Dr. Mortimer, but unfortunately I have some rather pressing business here in London. Of course, and there's no need. Please don't think me ungrateful, Dr. Mortimer. I do appreciate your concern for me. But this story of the Hound, it's nonsense. As for that silly letter and all the rest of it, I'm sure it can all quite easily be explained. I quite agree with you, Sir Henry. But all the same, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Watson to go down with you. What, sir? If you don't mind, Watson. Gladly, if you care to come. Of course. I'll be delighted. Good. Well, thank you, thank you, Dr. Watson, and thank you, sir. Watson then we'll stalk the hound together. I don't take it too lightly, Sir Henry. Well, I must be going. Uh, Mr. Holmes. Yes, Dr. Mortimer. About that person calling himself Sherlock Holmes. Very interesting, Dr. Mortimer. Uh, you'll uh, keep me posted, Watson. Write me daily reports. To the smallest detail, Holmes. Fine. I give him into your care, Sir Henry. Guard him well. Good night. Guard me well. <laughs> I, I like that. Oh, God. <laughs> Here we are, Sir Henry, on famous Dartmoor. And what a history it has. You see those rocks over there? Actually, they're stone houses built by Neolithic man. 50, 100,000 years ago. You don't suppose the Baskervilles go back that far? <laughs> and over there, beyond that hill, those dark spots, that's the great Grimpen Mire, as treacherous a morass as exists anywhere. Thousands of lives have been sucked down into its bottomless depths. Mysterious. Cheerful little spot. Fascinating. Oh, it is, Sir Henry. And mysterious. No wonder the people about here have such odd beliefs. Some will tell you that nothing ever really dies up on the moor. And after a time, one gets to believe it. Really? Do you believe that? Of course not. If I believed all the legends about this place, I wouldn't live here. I wouldn't have the courage. And now, if you look, Baskerville Hall, the home of your ancestor, Sir Henry. Whoa, nice house. 
How are you, Barryman? Very well, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Barryman, the butler, Sir Henry, and Mrs. Barryman. Welcome, Sir Henry. Welcome to Baskerville Hall. Thank you. Barryman was with your uncle most of his life, as was his father before him. Well, I... Wait a second. That guy has a black goatee, right? He fits the description. Remember, the cab driver, the handsome driver, said he had a black goatee, and he said his name was Sherlock Holmes. That means that he knew that Sherlock Holmes was following him or watching him, and he knew that he would find out, but he had a black goatee. Hmm, interesting. Uh, a couple things. Uh, Saeed says, kindless? I think you're talking about kindly. Sometimes when they're asking a favor, they'll say, kindly, kindly wait here, for example. Kindly help me with this. It's, it's a way to quite, again, quite formally say... Uh, I would really appreciate it if you would. Please do. It's it's very polite to say, uh, kindly kindly fill this out for me. Yeah, sometimes people still... I use that sometimes. Uh, and the other thing is pressing. P-R-E-S-S-I-N-G. Pressing business. He says, he says, I have some pressing business. Or, no, maybe he said, if you have nothing else that's pressing. I, I can't remember exactly. Uh, so pressing business for example, business or stuff to do or whatever just means that it's important. You have to do it now. You'd better hurry up. You'd better do it. It's pressing. I hope you'll be just as happy here with me. Thank you, Sir Henry. Uh, Sukhdeep says, how do you know the meaning of these old words that aren't really in use anymore? That's a really, really important question, and it's one of the reasons we're watching this. Just because something may not be used often, right, doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn it. When you watch movies, even old movies, you read books, you're going to always learn stuff that you may not actually say. But the problem is, if you always try to learn only what you're going to say, then you're not getting the whole picture. You need the whole picture. You need the sort of roots in the culture. And then from that large base of knowledge, then you can decide what to say and how to say it naturally. So that is the way to think about it. Don't think about it as, I should only learn what I'm going to use exactly. That's not possible because it has to come from decisions, making choices about what you want to say and what's useful, right? That's the key. So. But the wider your knowledge, the better. That's why you should watch movies, old and new. That's why you should be reading all the time. Reading is so important for that reason. Building the foundation of knowledge of vocabulary, of grammar, and of culture, which is very important, too. It's a really nice house. I want it. Baskerville Hall. And just as it's always been, Sir Henry... Your uncle did some modernizing upstairs, but down here nothing has been added or taken away since Sir Hugo's time. Well, I wouldn't say it's the most cheerful spot I've ever seen. I beg your pardon, sir. What time do you wish dinner served, sir? Early, I think. Dr. Mortimer has to drive home. Tell the coachman to have the carriage ready after dinner. I'll tell him, sir. Now, I suppose you'd like to freshen up. There's hot water in your room, sir. I'll show the way. Thank you. She does not look friendly. Careful, sir. These steps are a bit in need of repair. He has very big handwriting. Who writes that big? Dear Holmes! Wait, wait. I should read this, right? I missed it. Dinner service, sir. Early, I, I think read, Dr. I Mortimer has to drive home. Tell the coachman to have the carriage ready after dinner. I'll tell him, sir. Now, I suppose you'd like to freshen up. There's hot water in your room, sir. I'll show the way. Thank you. Be careful, sir. These steps are a bit in need of repair. This style of writing, if you don't know, 
If you're wondering why does it look like this, it's called cursive. The two different scripts, uh, one is print, P-R-I-N-T, and one is cursive. This is cursive. My dear Holmes, I've arrived tonight shortly after dark. Oh, sorry, he? Uh, yeah. Dr. Mortimer uh, stayed for the for dinner. Is he going to continue? Uh, I wish I could describe the dreadful eeriness of this place. Everybody has a gun in their drawer. I've got five. I didn't want to startle you. I thought you might be asleep. What is it? Come quickly. Someone's prowling around. What are you doing, Barryman? Oh, nothing, sir. It was the window. The window? Yes, sir. I was just seeing that it was fastened. <laughs> what does it matter whether it's fastened or not? The window on the second floor. I go around every night seeing that they're fastened. Liar. Sir Charles always insisted upon it. Well, that sounds reasonable enough. Well, if it's properly fastened now, Barryman, you can get back to bed. Yes, sir. Thank you. No way. Do you see anything? Nothing. Nothing except a pinpoint of light a long way off over there by the crags. Well, keep your eye on that point of light. And tell me what happens. Do you, do you see anything now? It's gone now. There it is again. And there it goes. Just as I thought. Barryman was singling someone. Come on, get some clothes. We'll find out. Crags. C-R-A-G-S. Over there by the crags. Those sharp rocks called crags. It's still there. Try not to lose sight of it. Creepy. Well, Sherlock is in London. He's not even here. down here. Whoever it is may come back.
What about getting a little further away from that light? Up there. Good idea. Stop! Are you mad? Whoever it is knows his way among these rocks. We don't. Who the devil can it be? You were right about Barrowman. Yes, but what connection can there possibly be between that horrible creature and, and Barrowman? You know, I have half a mind to fire the fellow in the morning, then notify the police and let them shadow him. No, it's the last thing that Holmes would want us to do. Our job is to watch Barrowman. Watch him like a hawk. Come on, let's get back. Shadowing? Yeah. Our job is to watch Berryman. Watch him like a hawk. To watch someone like a hawk, H-A-W-K, is to watch them very carefully. Now, that doesn't mean that you're constantly looking at them. It could just be to, to be very aware of them or pay attention to them. To watch someone like a hawk. To watch someone like a hawk means to be very careful in watching them. Uh, you, hear, you heard a couple other things. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon, sir. That means a couple different things. I beg your card pardon could be, sorry, what did you say? Sort of like, I didn't understand you clearly. Um, could you say that again? What? What? Sorry? What? That's why we just say pardon. Often now we just say pardon. Sorry? What? Pardon? But I beg your pardon. Beg your pardon is the full thing. Uh, it's quite formal. But sometimes when we're shocked by something, surprised by something, offended by something, we say, I beg your pardon. I can't believe you said that. It doesn't mean I actually want you to repeat yourself. It means I'm so shocked and surprised by what you said. Uh, prowling around is another thing you heard. Prowl, P-R-O-W-L, is like sneakily walking like an animal on the hunt. To prowl is to move slowly and quietly, walking around so others don't hear you. There's a reference to to the uh, guy who works in the house, B Berryman, right? Uh, prowling. He's the guy by the window. And then he's, I mean, what a terrible excuse he gives. He's by the window moving a candle. And then when they walk up to him, he says, I was, I was just checking that the windows were fastened. Fastened means the window is closed correctly. It's locked. To fasten something is to close it like that. F-A-S-T-E-N. Um, terrible excuse. I mean, obviously not. Guys, that guy's suspicious. He's creepy. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> the movie can end now. That guy's guilty. <laughs> what? What do you think it is? What does it sound like to, to you? Well, if we were back in London, this would seem ridiculous. Let's get on. Look here, Doctor. You don't believe that nonsense, do you? Of course not. No more than you do. What was it? That's what I, what we must find out. The wind? Hmm. Or was it the... Is he going to write hound? Or was it the hound? He writes so large. Morning. Huge writing. Morning, Sir Henry. So that's our famous moor, eh? Yes, sir. Creepy. Come in. Come in. I'm just writing a letter. Oh, where's Sir Henry? With huge writing. Here I know, sir. Where? Across the moor. Didn't I tell you to let me know immediately if Sir Henry ever ventured out there alone? I know, but I only just found out from my wife. Oh. 
Sherlock Holmes. Esquire. Hello there! Oh, forgive my shouting at you, Dr. Watson. My name's Stapleton. Live just across the moor. But how did you know my name, sir? Oh, from Dr. Mortimer, one of our neighbors. Oh, yes, sir. Hi, Sir Henry. He's very well, thank you. Oh, we were a bit worried he might decide not to come here. After the rumors that followed the sad death of Sir Charles, has Mr. Sherlock Holmes come to any conclusion yet? I really can't say. Oh, is he going to honor us with a visit? I haven't the slightest idea. Well, if I can be of any help, I do hope you'll call upon me. I know this place pretty well. Thank you, but I, I don't think I shall be needing any help. Wonderful place, this moor. From a scientist's point of view, there's nothing like it. Vast, barren, mysterious. You see those bright green spots over there? Seems a little more fertile than the rest. Fertile? That's the great Grimpen Mar. One false step means death. I only yesterday, one of the moor ponies wandered into it. Turned me sick with horror to see it struggling. And the sound of it screams... What's that? Oh, that. Well, the people round here say it's the hound. Surely you don't believe such rot? Bogs make queer noises. Or perhaps it's a bittern booming. A bittern? Yes, a very rare bird. Practically extinct. If anything is extinct on the moor. Stop! Stop! Look out! Stop! That was a voice. A woman's voice. A woman's voice. Thank heavens you heard me. Another few yards you'd have been into that mire. Looks innocent, doesn't it? But only yesterday a little moor pony got into it. And that was the end of it. Well, thank you for shouting at me. You're Sir Henry? Yes. Oh. I suppose I should say welcome, Sir Henry. But I'm afraid it wouldn't be sincere. Oh, that's understandable. The stranger coming here and taking the place of someone you were fond of. Oh, it's not that. I... No? Tell me, what is it? Sounds silly, I know. But... Oh, it's not that ridiculous hound legend. I never used to believe those things till I came to live down here. But you do now. You're rich. You can go anywhere you want to. There are so many other places to live in the world. Interesting places. Just now, I find this place very interesting. Uh. Why, hello, Beryl. That is... Oh, Dr. Watson, that, my stepsister, Miss Stapleton. Line. How do you do? How do you do? Hello, Doctor. And this, I'm sure, must be... Oh, Sir Henry, my brother. How are you? I was just telling Dr. Watson how delighted we are you decided to come here. I'm here and to stay. Oh, that's splendid. You know, it's been quite dull down here since the hall's been closed. It's wide open now, especially to friends of my uncle. You must both come and dine with me. You must come to us first. Yes, what about tomorrow night? You and Dr. Watson. We'll invite the neighbors over to meet you. Of course, you already know Dr. Mortimer. The only other one's old Mr. Franklin. Who's he? Oh, wait till you meet him, Sir Henry. He'll bring suit against you, I warn you. What on earth for? Oh, you'll find something. Suing people is a passion with him. I'll look forward to meeting him. All right, tomorrow night, then. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you again for rescuing me. Goodbye. Goodbye. He's interested. There's something about this fellow Stapleton I don't like. However, his charming stepsister has invited us to dine with them at their house. Okay, having dinner with the Stapletons. And were it not a personal insult to Sir Henry, I would never have come here this evening. Oh, but why, Mr. Franklin? As a stickler for convention. I'm not in the habit of breaking bread with my host on the eve of prosecuting him. <laughs> Great heavens, what crime have I committed now? A most gruesome one, Mr. Stapleton, that of body snatching. What? You're a body snatcher, sir. A ghoul, a despoiler of graves. Oh, come, come, Mr. Franklin. That's a very serious charge. Oh, Beryl... Refill Mr. Franklin's glass, will you? Thank you, my dear. Angry old man. And an excellent vintage it is, too. But if you're implying that I'm tipsy, sir... Oh, of course he's not. Sir. Tell us more, Mr. Franklin. Whose body has Mr. Stapleton been snatching? According to my evidence, sir, Mr. Stapleton was seen digging among the old stone huts on the moor and removed from there a skull. <laughs> of that. <laughs> a most interesting relic, Sir Henry, of Neolithic man. I'll show it to you after dinner. 50,000 years old if it's a day. Nonetheless, sir, you removed it from the grave sir. without the consent of the next of kin. And according to British law, that constitutes body snatching. Deny that if you can. 
But what good will it do you to prosecute Mr. Stapleton? None, sir. I have no interest in the matter. I act entirely from a sense of public duty. If you care to drop by my house someday and take a tipple of wine with me, I'd be glad to tell you a thing or two about... I think that's a Scottish influence. Uh, uh, around. That's sort of... Arr, arr, a lot of the tongue rolls. Um, uh, sorry. You're gonna be sorry. Like that is kind of a classic Scottish thing. I, I don't know how to do a Scottish accent, but there's that brr sound that you hear pretty often. It's Scottish. Yes, he says body snatcher. Body snatcher is uh, a grave robber, someone who goes into a cemetery and digs up a dead person and takes their body away for some reason. I, I do it sometimes on the weekend um, if I have nothing else to do. It's fun. Everybody here about him prowling the Grimpen Mire at night and why he takes her with him. Oh, there's no secret about us. As you know, I dabble a bit in the occult. Mrs. Mortimer has very strong, mediumistic qualities. She finds the old caves on the moor particularly conducive to psychic phenomena. Very interesting. Have you ever tried to communicate with my uncle since his death? Oh, yes. On several occasions, but with no success. But if my wife could send to a seance tonight while you, Sir Henry, are present, we might... No, no, James. Not tonight. Please. Perhaps some other time. Shall we have coffee in the drawing room? Drawing room. Oh, rich people. Hey, they've got a drawing room. If you and Dr. Watson had care to see my little collection. Oh, yes, the scout. Yes, we're in here. Thank you very much. Quite a museum. Oh, a very modest little collection. But this one really is quite a treasure. You'll observe its unusual cranial index. Gentlemen, gentlemen. My wife has consented. She's agreed to a seance. Splendid. Oh, fine. Please come at once. All right, I should explain that. So, a seance is a kind of ritual that some people who believe in ghosts and spirits after death will do to bring back the spirit of the dead. Um, you can see it in, in movies. You can read about it. It's, I believe, S-E-A-N-C-E. -E. A seance is performed. There's sort of a, you have to say some things, and then the, the spirit of the dead person comes back and you can communicate with them. Now, Mr. Mortimer's wife first said no I don't want to do a seance and then she agreed now she's agreed and that's why they're excited now what he said before was that Mr. Mortimer is interested in the occult the occult is a um, it's uh, it's a broad category for things like seances ghosts paranormal activity uh, the, the, the dead speaking that that sort of thing occult not cult occult the occult is a sort of a broad uh, a broad category and then he also says psychic phenomena so psychic phenomena would be something like being able to sense spirits or communicate with others telepathically for example a psychic phenomena would be someone able to read another person's mind uh, and that would be uh, not uh, uh, normal so it's paranormal or psychic phenomena. Uh, the last thing that's mentioned is conducive. So th Mr. Mortimer and his wife sometimes go into the the moor, which is this creepy place where all this story centers around, where the hound of Baskervilles lives and where people mysteriously die. And uh, this is where it all happens, right? Um, he says that his wife and he like to go there because they're interested in the occult and this place is conducive, especially the caves are conducive to uh, being a medium or communicating with the dead or ghosts, maybe because it's such a creepy, a creepy place. Conducive means that it, it makes it more likely to happen. It makes it more, uh, more friendly to that happening. If something is conducive to something else, then it's it, 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 that thing can happen more easily. Now then, 
If you'll all get chairs and arrange yourselves naturally, comfortably here by the fire. As Shakespeare says, you can call spirits from the vasty deep, but will they answer? They'll not answer scoffers or skeptics. If that's your attitude, Mr. Franklin, perhaps you wouldn't mind leaving us. Oh, I'm sure Mr. Franklin didn't mean to doubt. Of course I doubt. And I ask you to keep a civil tongue in your head, Dr. Mortimer. Ordering me out from under the roof of my host is grounds for a very nasty little lawsuit. Oh, <laughs> come now, Mr. Franklin. Sit down by me. Now, Who's nice? tonight we may communicate with Sir Charles. This is the seance. Find out what he feared so greatly. What he was running away from. He's trying to communicate with the guy who died Jennifer, at the beginning. You sit here, please. Sir Henry here. Or would you please put out those lights? Certainly. Stapleton, that light, please. Dr. Watson. Now, if you all keep quiet, I sit quite naturally. Sir Henry, your hand, please. Sir Charles, can you speak to us? Let us know if you're present. There are things that only you can explain. Speak to us, Sir Charles, if you're here. There are things that only you can tell us. Sir Charles, can you speak to us? Let us know if you're present. There are things that only you can tell us. Speak to us, Sir Charles, if you're here. There are things that only you can explain. That sound. I've heard it before. It's nothing. Nothing but the wind. Or a bittern. I was telling Dr. Watson only yesterday about it. Sir Charles? What happened that night? What was it you feared? Tell us, Sir Charles, of all the weird, terrible things that have happened on the moor. Creepy. Listen, there it is again. Oh, I can't stand it. Will somebody put on the lights, please? I tell you, it's nothing. Nothing but the wind. Mr. Franklin. What did you think it was? The Hound, of course. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Any fool would know that. James, get my cape. Take me home. There you are, my dear. Dr. Watson, can I give you and Sir Henry a lift? No, thank you. We have our own carriage. You're trembling. That wasn't the wind we heard. I've heard that sound before, often. That's what I tried to tell you yesterday on the moor. That's why I wish you hadn't come here. But sounds can't hurt you. It doesn't matter what they are or where they come from. You don't know. Oh, you've got to get all that nonsense out of your head, Beryl. I wish I could. You're going to. I'm going to make it my business to see that you do. You've been alone too much. There's nothing to do down here. That's the trouble. I'm going to change all that, if you let me. We'll go fishing together, riding. You like riding? Yes, I do. Good. We'll start tomorrow, shall we? Wow. Yes, thanks. Fine. He's aggressive. I'll ride over for you in the morning. Wow. Coming, Sir Henry? Right, Doctor. They got a date. Good night. Good night. They got a date. Movies don't do this anymore. Movies don't show writing that you have to read on screen. <laughs> Not anymore. Mm, yeah. Um, let's see what he says. Nothing to report except I am quite convinced now that Sir Henry... I Now I can't read it. Is... Head over heels in love. Oh, right. Yeah, he's in love. Head over heels in love with Beryl. Beryl is the girl. Hello. Hello, Beryl. Well, where should we go today? There's one place we haven't been, High Tor. Fine. That's where all the old ruins are. You know, Jack says that they're over 50,000 years old. That sounds interesting. And you can still see the remains of their stone huts. All right, good. 
head over heels in love. When is Sherlock Holmes going to show Those flattish stones over there, they're graves. Oh, and those huge ones, monoliths, are remains of their temples. Doesn't anybody know who they were or what they looked like? <laughs> Jack has some theory about them. But anyway, they must have been very primitive, living on roots and dressing in skins. <laughs> but still laughing and dreaming, just as we do. I wonder how many times some young savage brought his bride into this very hut. Said, take your hat off, darling, this is home. <laughs> you know, this is probably where she cooked his first meal for him. And <laughs> what a yell he must have let out when she burnt it up. <laughs> and now they're quite forgotten. Just as we will be, too, one day. Do you suppose when a man met a girl that he liked, he had to wait a respectably long time before he dared tell her? Or things like that. Sudden. Natural. I'd like to think that things were like that. Farrell, that's the way they are with me. Oh. Oh, you didn't oh, know? We've, we've only known each other such a little while. There, <laughs> you see, convention, custom. We can't even be ourselves when we want to be. Why is that? You know, I used to come down here quite often and explore these old caves when Jack and I first came to live here. I didn't have the fear of the moor then. And you've none now. That's all gone. Oh. When I'm with you, it's gone. I seem to forget it, laughing and talking. But when I'm alone, it all comes back to me. And at night, I, I still wake up trembling, as if in my sleep I could hear those awful noises. Hmm. Then it gets bad as ever, and I... Oh, I think of you, and I wish you weren't here. Oh, don't say that. Well, I wish you were in London or, or in Canada. But even if I wanted to go back to London or Canada, I couldn't. Why not? You know why. You must know why. I can't go anywhere now, unless you come with me. Oh, Henry. Oh. <laughs> Would you mind uh, pausing for a minute? I'm afraid I've lost my way. Oh, hello, Doctor. Sir Henry and I were just... We were... we were... we were getting engaged. Engaged? Splendid. May I congratulate you both? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Hold on a second. Getting engaged? Just a second. As I understand the situation, he just... Okay, so they've been riding horses together and exploring the moors. I get that. Uh, obviously he is head over heels in love. Head over heels in love means just you've kind of lost your mind. So in love with this person, right? He I'm head over heels about this person, about Beryl. This is Beryl. Um, and then he finally, they're walking and he finally tells her, hey, I'm interested in you. <laughs> they kiss, it looks like for the first time. And then they talk about, he says we just got engaged. So does a kiss, what, I'm confused. How does a kiss mean an engagement? He just told her that he's interested in her for the first time. And now they're engaged. Engaged means they're ready to get married. What is going on here? This is ridiculous. This can't be right. This, this Is this some sort of uh, uh, 19th century British custom? You're, if you kiss if you kiss a man then that means you have to marry him <laughs> all right oh one other thing um he says give you a lift the old guy says do you need me to give you a lift uh no he says well he says it in the scottish accent that i can't do um that means that means to take somebody somewhere in your car or your carriage or your handsome or whatever now, you might be asking, is that still common to give someone a lift? Yes, it's very common. In fact, when I saw that just now, I was surprised. Whoa, what's up? And give you a lift. These are very modern expressions. And we see them in in this movie from 1939, based on a book from, what, 1890-something. Give you a lift means to, to take you somewhere. Do you need a lift to the airport? I can give you a lift to school, give you a ride to school. And what's up? Both really common modern expressions. Hmm. So I guess don't kiss boys unless you're ready to get married. Who is that? 
It seems that we didn't pick a very secluded spot. What do you want? Just crossing the moor, sir. Just crossing the moor. I'd be, uh, I'd be peddling my wares, sir. I, I, I must have something here. Would interest you, sir? How about it? How about a nice mouth organ, sir? All right. I have a feeling I know who this old man is. If you've got a guess, let me know. But I'm... I know. No, thank you. Here, 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 here's something an old squire like you could use, sir. A, a fussel. A fussel for calling your sheepdog. Calling my what? <laughs> sheepdog, sir. A regular charmer, sir. <laughs> you're him for miles around, sir. <laughs> Take it away and yourself with it. I'll be some, I'll some scent for the lady, sir. That'll do. Be off about your business. All right, all right, sir. I ain't doing no harm. I ain't doing no harm. You know that's what I hate about this moor. There's all. No, that's got it. That's Sherlock Holmes. He's in disguise. I'm pretty sure. Something. He's famous for that. Strange. Look, he's limping on the other foot now. That is Sherlock Holmes, wearing a beard. Oh, now we got some print, not cursive. So you see the difference, right? Print versus cursive writing. Dr. Watson, if you want to hear something to your advantage, come at once to the stone hut south, uh, southeast edge of Grimpen Mire. Grimpen Mire is the really scary place where the horse fell in it's a very scary place yeah that is that is totally sherlock in disguise a hundred percent i'm guessing batterman yes sir who delivered this note no one sir i found it slipped under the front door mm -hmm. thank you By the way, guys, feel free to hit the like button if you haven't already. I would appreciate that. <clears throat> um, if you want to see future videos or watch more movies, let me know which kind of movies you're interested in. They have to be old, though, I think. <clears throat> and um, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, check out the courses. This is the last day of the big promotion. This is the last day of the courses at this price. Quite a few of you guys have already purchased the package Uh uh, it's going to expire today, and that is in the uh, that is in the description, I believe. Um, is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Yes, it is. Let me double check that. Is that correct. And let me know what you guys think of um, overall of movie. Um... Ooh, no, wrong link in the description. Hold on, I'll fix that. Let me know what you guys think of of movie night. Uh, and then if I mean if you like it if you don't like it that's fine uh, but if you're interested in doing more of these in the future then we can watch more movies I think it's fun it gives me a reason to watch old movies which I like to do and you know to kind of explain explain them talk about them I think it's I think it's pretty cool so um, let me know hold on just a second I've got a I've got a Copy something here. Give me one second. Give me one second. Well, there's sort of a so the reason one reason honestly that we're watching um, that we're watching this is uh, that it is um, copyright friendly, which means from my research, this movie and a lot of other old movies are. Um, they are in the public domain, which means that I can sit here and show them to you on YouTube and I don't have to worry about the video getting, you know, canceled or blocked or anything like that. We'll be, we're okay to watch it. Uh, we're okay, we're free to watch it. I'm pretty sure, as far as I know <laughs> from my research. All right, let's continue. Oh, 
Bannerman, uh, is Sir Henry at home? No, sir. He's gone across the moor. Oh, I'm sorry I missed him. Did Dr. Watson go with him? No, sir. Oh, thank you, Bannerman. I'll tell Sir Henry your call, sir. Yes, do. Yes, do. Cool spyglass. I like I like British English. I like this posh British. I think I think it sounds cool. I like it a lot. Just to give you guys a time index, if, in case you're curious, how I don't know if you can see how long the movie is. So I'll just give you a sense for it. It looks like there are uh, 25 minutes left in the movie. We've got 25 minutes left, so something's going to happen. Some exciting stuff. They we're, getting, we're getting to the exciting part. Like, subscribe. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. <coughs> Come on, he's got to be Was it you who sent me that communication? I did, sir. Out with it. Whatever it is you want me to hear. I, I only want you to hear this zither, sir. Zither? <laughs> they don't come no finer, sir. What blasted impertinence. Getting me out here to... Look here, my man. You're up to something. I, I only ask you to try him, sir. Be careful. <laughs> this thing's loaded. Who are you? Well, I might ask the same of you, sir. Trowling around the moor, spying out on everybody. That's my business, to spy. Oh, what is, is it? Yes, and if you want to know who I am, I'll tell you. Who are ye? I'm Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, the detective? Yes, and now perhaps you realize why I can't be hoodwinked. Oh, sir, 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 that changes everything. Now, who are you? Quick! Well, in that case, sir, my name must be Watson. <laughs> Holmes! How are you, my dear fellow? A fine detective you are, calling yourself Sherlock Holmes. So you've been down here on the moor all the time. That's a fine way to treat me, I must say. Send me down here. Let me think that you were in London, working on that black man case. Let me sit up half the night, writing those blasted reports. Serious reports, my dear Watson, and very valuable they were, too. I made arrangements to have them forwarded on to me. A shabby trick which I'll not forget. <laughs> ah, but a very necessary trick. If I'd come down here with awesome. you and Sir Henry, every movement of mine would have been watched. While in this way, only you and Sir Henry have been watched, and I've been free to work. That's all very well. But making a fool of me... Sit down, Watson. Do sit down. Watson, you're, you're a dumb supper. guy. Come on, get everybody over knows. Huff? Don't get so I'm upset. in a huff. Yeah, try some of these sardines. <laughs> it's a pity I didn't know you were coming. I think it's funny how upset Watson is. Because he's famously kind of the... He, he's... he's Holmes' sidekick, he writes things down. He gets so frustrated and upset when, <laughs> whenever Sherlock Holmes makes him look stupid. Look how angry he is. <laughs> how dare you, sir? That's great. It's great! I'd have provided a brace of pheasants. It's a pity you didn't think of bringing down that infernal violin of yours. 
to regale me with some of your enchanting music. I did, my dear Watson. <laughs> Anything to oblige. <laughs> Holmes is a classic troll. Well, if you've had enough to eat, Watson, and you're feeling a better spirits, I think we'd better be getting along. Getting along where, if I'm not praying? I'm returning with you to Baskerville Hall. There are still some gaps to be filled in, but all in all, things are becoming a little clearer. Not to me, I assure you. Still a hopeless jumble. Mr. Franklin, Dr. Mortimer, the Barrowmans. Put it all together, and what have you got? Murder, my dear Watson. Refined, cold-blooded murder. Murder? There's no doubt about it in my mind. Or perhaps I should say in my imagination. But that's where crimes are conceived and where they're solved. In the imagination. But there's been no murder. Unless you mean Sir Charles. And the facts clearly indicated that he died from heart failure. That's why so many murders remain unsolved, Watson. People will stick to facts, even though they prove nothing. Now, if we go beyond facts, use our imagination as the criminal does. Imagine what might have happened and act upon it, as I've been trying to do in this case, we usually find ourselves justified. Then you know? Another day, two at the most, and I will know. My one fear is that the murderer will strike before we're ready. In that case... What's that? Where's it coming from? There. No, 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 oh. there. Found. Come on, Watson, quick. and fallen over the cliff. He's dead. Skull crushed in. The convict. Thank heaven. What? That's the man I shot at the night we arrived. The man Barrowman was signaling to. Who is it? The Notting Hill murderer. He escaped from prison last month. Been hiding on the moor ever since. The Notting Hill murderer? Do you mean that he is responsible for all this? That remains to be seen. But he's wearing Sir Henry's clothes. Yes, yes, that accounts for it. Accounts for what? For the hound. These clothes were the cause of that poor devil's death. Do you mean that the hound was after Sir Henry? Yes, and mistook the convict for him because of the scent of the clothes. Do you remember that missing boot, Watson? Why do you suppose the brown one, the one that had never been worn, was so mysteriously replaced in the black one taken? Why? Because a boot that had never been worn wouldn't have had the scent of the owner. And the black one had. But how does this convict come to be wearing Sir Henry's clothes? Oh, well, that's simple enough. Why, Dr. Watson? Is somebody hurt? Who's this? The convict who escaped from Princeton. Oh, how terrible. I heard a cry, terrible. that's what brought me over here. What's your theory about it, Mr. Holmes? No quick at identification. Oh, everybody knows you, sir. As a matter of fact, we've been expecting you down here. My name's Stapleton. How do you do? You came in time to see a tragedy. Yes. It's most unpleasant remembrance for me to take back to London tomorrow. Oh, must you go so soon? I've been looking forward to meeting you. Yes, yes, I'm afraid I must. Well, we were hoping, Mr. Holmes, that you may be able to shed some light on the occurrences that have puzzled us down here. Okay, a couple things, very quickly. Before we continue, I know I'm not going to... I'm trying to find the balance between when to stop and mention a couple things and when to, when to watch, because I want to watch it too. But uh, uh, I just want to mention a couple things. So... Number one, the old man with the beard, he was impersonating a peddler, a peddler, P-E-D-D-L-E-R. To peddle something is to sell little trinkets and stuff that you have. You walk around and you sell stuff. It's called a peddler. It's, it's kind of an old school uh, profession that doesn't really exist, not so much uh, anymore. But sometimes we, we still use the word peddling to say we're pushing something, we're trying to push others to do something or buy something. What are you, what are you trying to peddle? What are you trying to peddle, huh? What are you trying to get me to agree to or buy or whatever it is? Like I, I'm always trying to peddle my courses, right? I'm a, I'm a peddler for my courses. Can't help it. All in all is the other one. All in all means if you look at the whole picture, all in all, I would say that you're right. 
all in all, if we take the whole picture into account, if we consider everything, all in all. Uh, they call this guy a convict. Why do they call him a convict instead of a murderer? A convict is someone who has gone to prison for a crime, someone who's guilty of a crime. It doesn't have to be murder. It could be theft. It could be whatever, drugs, whatever it is. So it's someone who has gone to, to prison. Um, that remains to be seen, something you just heard Holmes say. That remains to be seen. That means that we don't know yet. We'll see. It's kind of a formal way. It's still common. People still say it. That remains to be seen. It means we'll see. We don't know for sure. So maybe you make a conclusion or you say something is true, but we don't know yet, and I want to wait and see. So I say, mm -hmm. it remains to be seen. I don't know yet. Maybe I don't want to agree with you yet completely. The last one, that guy says, hey, maybe you can shed some light on that. Right? To shed light on something, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a cough recently. <clears throat> to shed light on something is to reveal details to expose details or to uh, uh, to show or reveal something that other people can't see. New facts, new information that can make something more clear, easier to understand. So shed light on something. I'm trying to shed some light on old movies. All right, here we go. Yes, but an investigator needs something more than legends and rumors. Oh, quite so. Give me a hand, will you, Watson? We'd better put this poor fellow in one of the huts till the morning. Oh, let me give you a hand. Oh, I think we can manage all right, thank you. The scent is the smell. He smelled his boots, and then his boots and his clothes would smell the same, so the hound would attack. Where's Sir Henry Barrowman? In the library, sir. Now, Barrowman, if your wife's still up, will you tell her Mr. Sherlock Holmes would like a word with her? Sherlock Holmes? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's the guy. <clears throat> Sir Henry! Holmes! I'm glad to see you so well, Sir Henry. Why didn't you tell me Mr. Holmes was coming? Well, I was oh, just... Oh, well, he didn't know. We ran across each other in the village. I am glad to see you. What is it, Barrowman? Oh, I asked to see Mrs. Barrowman, if you don't mind, Sir Henry. Of course not. Those two are bad news. Come in, Mrs. <clears throat> Barrowman. I, uh, I think you'd better sit down. Thank you, sir. I prefer to stand. I'm afraid I have some rather bad news for you. What is it? Well, it's going to be a bit of a shock. Oh. They've caught him. Your... Your brother... They'll hang him for sure. No, Mrs. Barrowman. He's beyond the law now. He's in more merciful hands. Mm. We came upon the poor fellow as we were crossing the moor. Okay, so he didn't say it directly. Your brother. Oh, they'll hang him for sure. Hang means to... <coughs> right, to hang someone if they're guilty of a crime um, is uh, punishment for what? For maybe murder. So, her brother... Somehow Sherlock Holmes has figured out that the murderer that they just found dead is her brother. And that they were signaling to the murderer. They were signaling to him because they knew he escaped from prison, I guess. So they'll probably explain it more later. But that's what they're suggesting. In more merciful hands suggests he's dead. And the more merciful hands are maybe maybe God's hands, right? Uh, he's dead. So he's in the hands of, of whoever. God. He must have missed his footing and fallen over the cliff. No further need, Batterman, to signal to him from the window or take food out to him or give him Sir Henry's discarded clothes. God, oh, Sir Henry. It was all my doing. Batterman here wanted to tell you all along so as you could notify the police that he was my kin, my old kin, even though he was never any good. We understand. He won't hold it against Batterman. Oh, yes, sir. Of course not. Now take her along and see that she's all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sir Henry. Sir Henry's a nice guy. Well, it's nice to get that end cleared up for their sake as well as mine. It clears up everything, I think, Sir Henry. That poor devil must have been completely demented. And that accounts for those dreadful noises that we've been hearing from time to time. Exactly. 
Your troubles are over, Sir Henry. <clears throat> I really am most grateful, Mr. Holmes. Oh, not at all. I've done little enough. But you can sleep peacefully in your bed now and commence to lead the life of a happy country squire. Well, not for a little bit, I'm afraid. I'm off to Canada again. Canada? Beryl, Miss Stapleton and I are going to be married. After one kiss. Miss Stapleton. A very charming young lady. Congratulations. <clears throat> Everything's arranged. Her brother's giving us a farewell party tomorrow night. We'll be married in London the following day, and then off for a honeymoon to Canada. My congratulations too, Sir Henry. Thanks. What luck you're here. You and Dr. Watson will be with us tomorrow night. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I can't. I must hurry back to London. And so should you too, Watson. We'll have to report to the police here about that convict in the morning, but there's a train leaving early in the afternoon. Oh, what a pity. Beryl will be dreadfully disappointed. Now, we'll remedy that when you come up to London. You must... You must dine with us before you sail. Well, there's the old boy himself, Sir Hugo. Hugo, the beast of the Baskervilles. Not a bad bit of brushwork. By Ransom, one of the minor painters. Oh, I don't imagine it's very valuable. I can't quite agree with you, Sir Henry. One day it might prove to be of the greatest value. Well, we must be going. Okay, Sherlock Holmes knows something. There's still one or two little points, Holmes, and I can't for the life of me reconcile with your theory about that poor demented convict. One or two little points? But surely you can't mean that he was in London three weeks ago? Sent that letter? Stole that boot? Of course not. And who the devil did? The same person who was responsible for the death of that convict last night. And will try again to murder Sir Henry tonight. Tonight? Unless my imagination has run away with itself, and I don't think that it has. Then why are we rushing up to London? Leaving Sir Henry entirely unprotected? We're not, my dear Watson. We're just giving the impression of rushing up to London. In a minute and a half, we'll be in Oakhampton. There, we'll catch a train back to Dartmoor. If my surmise is correct, we'll nab our man in the act. But if you know who it is, why all this round about rigmarole? Why don't you have him arrested? Because I've no case. Not a shred of evidence that would hold in any court. The only way is to catch him red-handed. To catch him in such a way that there's no escape. No alibi. That means gambling with Sir Henry's life. But you can't possibly... Gambling to save his life. But we've got to take that chance. Otherwise, the shadow of sudden death will be forever hanging over his head, and sooner or later... Here we are, O'Campton. And may you both spend the rest of your years together in happy contentment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And now I want to thank you all for the kindness that you've shown a stranger. And when Beryl and I return, I want you to know that you'll always be welcome at Baskerville Hall. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, Sir Henry. It's going to be lonely for you, Mr. Stapleton, with Beryl gone. Yes, indeed it will, Mrs. Mortimer. I shall be more dependent than ever upon you, my neighbours. Don't count upon me, sir. In my opinion, you're a body snatcher. <laughs> and until the courts have decreed otherwise, I want nothing whatsoever to do with you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Franklin. <laughs> you're a body snatcher. I say, driver, can't we go a little faster? I'm doing the best I can, sir. We said go fast and not break our necks. How far is it to Baskerville Hall? It's five miles by road, sir, but if you want to cut over the moor, it's only about three. Here you are. Come on, Watson, quick. Thank you, sir. Three miles. It's been a wonderful evening, Stapleton. Well, glad you could be with us, Mortimer. Thank you. Take this brooch, my dear, and wear it on your wedding dress. It belonged to my great... Hey, Google, how long does it take to walk three miles? Here's what I understood from the website Livestrong.com. A three-mile walk will take about 45 to 55 minutes at a moderate pace. Do you want a little more context? No, thank you. Okay. 45 minutes for a three-minute walk. That's what it says. 45 minutes. A uh, couple, couple key words for what's coming up, because this is sort of the climax of the movie. Uh, nab him means whoever's going to try to kill uh, um, Henry is going to be caught. To nab someone is to catch someone. To nab someone, N-A-B, is to catch someone. And we're going to catch him red-handed. To catch someone red-handed means that they're in the middle of doing the thing that you wanted to catch them doing. They're doing it now. You were caught red-handed. That means you're stealing the thing. You're murdering someone. You're 
you're taking my chocolate. Uh, I caught you red-handed. You can use it for really common everyday things too. It's not only for serious crimes, for very common things. It's really common. Grandmother, something old, something new, <laughs> you know. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Mrs. Mortimer. Thank you so much. And come back to us soon, both of you. We will. May I offer you a lift, my lad? It's such a beautiful night, Mr. Franklin. I think I'll walk, thank you. Merely a gesture of hospitality. Reject it if you like. <laughs> Get up there! That guy. He's such a rude old man. Not alone, Sir Henry. Why not? There's, there's nothing to fear anymore. We can't be sure. Oh, but I have Mr. Sherlock Holmes' own word for it. Come along, James. Something's Good night, Sir Henry. Good night, Mrs. Mortimer. And the best of luck to you both. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I wish you'd let Mr. Franklin drive you home. I wanted to stay and say good night to you. Anybody have any guesses about what's happening? Would anyone like to guess the ending? Put it in the comments. This is our last good night. From tomorrow on, there won't be any more, ever. Tomorrow we'll be away from this place. I wish it were now. So do I. Oh, now, don't be silly. Good night, Beryl. One good kiss night, means getting married. Well, was it a nice party? Wonderful. Everything, and most of all, you. Jack, I haven't said very much about going away, but you know how I feel. Yes, of course. It had to be. Well, you won't be too dreadfully lonely, will you? Well, I shall have my work. And... Oh, Henry and I'll be back before you even know it. Yes, of course you will. Well, you better go to bed now. You've got a big day ahead of you tomorrow. Good night, Jack. Good night, dear. Yeah, for those of you who didn't see earlier, there's a hound that's killing people in the moor, this area. And uh, at the very beginning of the story, Sir Henry had his boot stolen. And we've realized by now that the boot was being used to as a scent for the dog. Now, the murderer who died was killed by the hound because he was wearing Sir Henry's clothes, which has the same smell as his boot. So hounds will follow the, follow the smell, right? So he killed the wrong person. He thought he was killing Henry, but he killed the murderer because the murderer was wearing Sir Henry's clothes given to him by his sister, who is Sir Henry's housekeeper, who wants to take care of her brother even though she knows he's a bad guy. Now we see that it's that it's um, his fiance's brother who is the one with the, the missing boot who may be responsible for all this. Who knows? Let's see. He 
Bad dog. Sit. Sit, dog. Bad. Roll over. Handshake. You'll be all right, old man. What? Yes, old chap. Mr. Holmes? Yes. What, what, what was it? We've got to get him home quickly. Can you manage him alone? Yes. Because I've got things to do. Help get his arm around my shoulder. things to do. I need to go get my nails done.
cemetery. The boot. Pretty painful, I know, but it won't take much longer. Go on, it doesn't hurt. Now, Mrs. Barrowman, some gauze. Watson is a doctor. He's an actual doctor. I just heard the dreadful news. Thank heavens you're safe. Is he all right? Well, now we know for certain that this is no legend, no myth. There really is a hound. Was a hound? Yes, Mr. Holmes told me. I ran into him across the moor. He asked me to send you to him at once. It's a matter of great importance. He said he'd wait for you at the spot where the, where the beast was killed. I must finish here first. This poor boy's taken a terrific beating. Well, uh, I can carry on with you, Doctor. I'm a bit of a doctor myself, you know. Do you think you could manage? Yes, I'm sure I could. I think you really ought to go, Dr. Watson. Mr. Holmes was most urgent. Oh, really? I, uh, I shall need some hot water, Mrs. Baderman. Oh, I want it boiling, please. Yes, sir. Gonna kill it, try to kill him again. It must have been a terrifying experience, Sir Henry. Terrifying. Terrifying. It was. It was indeed. Yes, I can see you're still weak from loss of blood. I can't say I feel any too well. Poison. Here, drink this, Sir Henry. You'll feel much stronger. I'll see to your other bandages after. Oh, it may taste a little bitter, but don't mind that. Don't drink it. Sir Henry! Well, feeling better? Yes, thanks. I see that's uncomfortably close to your eye, isn't it? Another one on this side? Huh? Well, well, well. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. That was clumsy of me. It was only a bit of a tonic. Sir Henry's lost considerable blood. Yes? Henry! Henry. It's, gonna, it's I'm probably right, burned through the floor. Oh, no, right? you're not. We heard those floor. dreadful noises <laughs> on the way home. It's a mercy he's alive. I owe you an apology, Sir Henry, for jeopardizing your life. Jeopardizing? But you saved my life. But there was no possible way for me to foretell the farm. And I must apologize, too, for deceiving you last night. When I told you that your troubles were over, I knew that they weren't. But if I hadn't cleared out, the crisis which came tonight would have uh -oh. been indefinitely postponed with the shadow of death hanging over you. And over you, too, Miss Stapleton. You knew this was going to happen? How could you know? The person who wanted to snuff out your life, Sir Henry, was the same one who plotted to kill your uncle. He wanted to get you both out of the way so that he could lay claim to this place, to the whole Baskerville estate. In tracing back his lineage, he discovered not only that he was the next of kin, but also learned of that old legend about the hound. So he brought the hound to life by the simple expedient of buying the most savage dog that he could find and hiding it here on the moor until he needed it. If he had succeeded tonight, the blame eyes. would have fallen on the legendary monster. Look at his eyes. You can see that. Those are the eyes of a guilty man. And no possible suspicion would have been attached to him. Yeah, sure. Like most ingenious killed. device. Not possible. And I'm quite sure that he would have had no difficulty in proving his claim to Baskerville Hall and all that goes with it. The most amazing instance of a throwback that I've ever seen. And you can see for yourself. Stapleton. One move and I'll shoot. Oh. Jack! You two, stay where you are. You're under arrest, Stapleton. For the murder of Sir Charles Baskerville, the murder of a convict, and the attempted murder of Sir Henry. You can't arrest me, Holmes. Now, one move from any of you and I'll blast you all at kingdom come. 
No! Last you to kingdom come. So sorry, old boy. <laughs> What's the matter, old man? What's the matter? That's our man. Stapleton, the murderer? Stapleton? He won't get very far. <sighs> Posted constables on both the roads, and the only other way is across the Grimpen Mire. He's gonna... I'm just gonna die. I'm so sorry, Miss Stapleton. I wish I could have spared you this. Well, that officially closes the case, Sir Henry. And a very interesting case for your annals, Watson. An ordinary dog, an ingenious criminal. And a more ingenious detective. I owe you a tremendous debt of gratitude. Oh, we all do, Sir Henry. Mr. Holmes, we've admired you in the past, as does every Englishman. Your record as our greatest detective is known throughout the world. But this, seeing how you work, knowing that there is in England such a man as you, gives us all a sense of safety and security. God bless you, Mr. Holmes. God bless Thank you, you Dr. Holmes. Mortimer. Thank God you. God bless you. And now, if you don't mind, I've had rather a strenuous day. I, I think I'll turn in. Of course. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, Watson, the needle. <laughs> I think the needle means Sherlock Holmes likes to do drugs. <laughs> he does a lot of drugs <laughs> in the stories. A lot of drugs. And uh, I think uh, maybe he's asking Watson to help him get his drugs. <laughs> All right. That's the end. Good story. Uh, there's something about... There's something about old movies that I really like. Something very classic about about old black and white movies. If you guys agree and you want to watch more, give me some ideas. Let me know what kinds of movies you want to watch. More Sherlock Holmes. Nothing. Um, if you have any feedback about, for example, how often I stop to mention things or give, uh, uh, give some phrases and, and new words... Let me know. I'm happy to get feedback because I haven't done this before. So I, I would appreciate any feedback you might have. Again, I would really appreciate if you guys could hit the uh, like button, subscribe. I plan to do these in the future. I enjoy it. I think it's cool. I like to watch old movies. And um, uh, thanks, guys, for checking it out. And thanks for... Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for the comments and questions throughout. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. And uh, I look forward to it. See you, see ya. Bye-bye.